Welcome to the Coronavirus Weekly Brief. We're your hosts. I'm David Skirman. And I'm Emily Schneider. Here are the headlines you need to know. Medical experts are warning the public not to forgo mask wearing amid an exponential increase of the B117 coronavirus variant within the United States. The B117 variant, which was first identified in the UK late last year, has shown to be 59 to 74% more transmissible than the first novel coronavirus strain to reach US shores at the outset of the pandemic. Inoculations warned experts are not moving fast enough to stop a new spike despite vast acceleration in vaccine distribution in recent weeks. Quote, at 2.9 to 3 million doses of a vaccine a day over the next 6 to 14 weeks when the surge is likely to happen is not going to really take care of the problem at all, unquote, said Michael Osterholm, director of the University of Minnesota's Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy, speaking to NBC's Meet the Press on Sunday. Osterholm added that the incidence of B117 has increased from 4% of American cases last month to 30-40% to today. Quote, and what we've seen in Europe when we've hit that 50% mark, you'll see the cases surge, unquote, he said. Concerns over the B117 variant continue as states increasingly loosen public health restrictions. As we noted last week, Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott announced that he was reopening Texas and ending the state's mask mandate. Mississippi's Republican Governor Tate Reeves announced that he was also ending his state's mask mandate the same day, but he urged people to keep wearing them. President Joe Biden slammed the governor's decisions as, quote, Neanderthal thinking. On Wednesday, Chief Presidential Medical Advisor Anthony Fauci said, It just is inexplicable why you would want to pull back now. The Biden administration is planning to launch a $650 million private-public expansion of testing in schools and other congregate settings, according to reports. The program's testing hubs will be used to coordinate and oversee the administration's push to expand testing in K-8 through schools, as well as other settings with a high risk of viral spread, such as homeless shelters. Officials from the Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, Hope to launch the first hub in April. If implementation goes to plan, the first hub will conduct 150,000 tests by the end of its first month while drawing on existing capacity. HHS Testing and Diagnostic Working Group lead, Industry Officer Stephen Santos, said, quote, The coordinating center is going to have the responsibilities of coordinating with states, counties, and local school districts on testing efforts for K-8 students within their region and ensure proper testing at laboratories. Santos also stressed that despite the acceleration of vaccine distribution and falling case numbers, increased testing remains critical. Quote, with the vaccine available, there is a real opportunity to get to zero transmission and stay there, he said. But to do so, we need to increase testing capacity and to continue to identify and stop spread. Maintaining high levels of testing as vaccination rolls out and transmission decreases is critical to controlling this pandemic and to preventing another wave, end quote. Former HHS Assistant Secretary Brett Girard, who served under the Trump administration, told Politico that the concept had been discussed last summer, but did not gain traction until the end of 2020. Quote, we just couldn't get it done in time. It's a big thing. Multiple coordinating centers. You can't just turn that around in a week or two. They definitely added the money to it. End quote. Starting this week, European authorities will offer the Pfizer-BioNTech coronavirus variant to every adult in the Schwaz district of Austria kicking off a real-world test of the efficacy of current vaccines against a variant known as B1351. The region, which is near the western Austrian city of Innsbruck, has been battered by a surge in infections due to the new variant, and Austria's Chancellor Sebastian Kurz has been lobbying the European Union for extra doses to stop its spread. Last week, Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, agreed to allocate 100,000 extra doses of the vaccine to Austria in exchange for allowing a multinational team of scientists to collect data from the mass vaccination set in Tyrol. Quote, our goal is to be able to massively halt, if not eradicate, the South African variant, Gunter Platter, the governor of Tyrol, said, announcing the project last Wednesday. Quote, we want to protect the people from this variant. Within the first 24 hours of registration being open, more than 20,000 residents, about a third of those who were eligible, signed up to get their shots as part of the pilot program. On Monday, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern announced that New Zealand would only use the Pfizer vaccine to inoculate its population against the coronavirus. She said the decision was based on the vaccine's effectiveness and that using a single vaccine would make it fairer for all New Zealanders. The decision may also be related to the delay in getting regulatory approval for the vaccines. So far, only Pfizer has been approved by New Zealand's regulatory body. Ardern said that the government has purchased 10 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine, which is enough to inoculate all 5 million residents with the required two doses each. 
She said most of the doses are expected to arrive in New Zealand during the second half of this year. New Zealand has so far completed inoculations for only a few thousand people, mainly border workers. New Zealand has mostly eradicated the virus, but a recent cluster of infections put Auckland into a week-long lockdown that just ended on Sunday. On Saturday, the Senate passed the Biden administration's $1.9 trillion COVID relief and stimulus package. The Washington Post writes, quote, The package is set to count among one of the largest rescue measures in U.S. history, reflecting Democrats' pledges to erase disparities that long predate the deadly pandemic. The bill authorizes $1,400 checks to millions of low- and middle-income Americans, bolsters families by providing new yearly child tax benefits, boosts unemployment payments for workers still out of a job, and invests highly in the country's attempt to climb back from a public health emergency that has devastated families, workers, students, and businesses alike. The bill passed on a party-line vote with no Republican support. Biden stated, I promised the American people that help was on the way. Today, I can say we've taken one more giant step forward in delivering on that promise that help was on the way. However, moderate Democratic senators succeeded in changing parts of the bill, including limiting eligibility for direct checks and nixing the inclusion of a hike to the minimum wage. Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat for West Virginia, pushed for reduced unemployment benefits, sparking tensions within the party as he suggested he'd work with Republicans to amend the bill. The Washington Post writes, quote, Democrats ultimately resolved the stalemate with a deal that authorized the extra unemployment payments at $300 per week, a lower amount than the House approved, while extending the aid until early September. From there, party lawmakers banded together to jettison dozens of Republican amendments that would have dramatically slashed spending, struck funds set aside for transit systems and local governments, or otherwise poisoned the bill, end quote. Manchin's efforts drew harsh criticism. In an interview on the process, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Democrat of New York, stated, quote, We had what we thought was an agreement, but then Joe Manchin looked at it and was unsure, adding, If Manchin would have approved the GOP amendment, the bill probably wouldn't have passed the House. And I told him that, and he understood that, end quote. On Sunday, Senator Joe Manchin said that he never intended to threaten the bill's passage if he didn't get his preferred solution on the unemployment benefits, saying, quote, that's not how negotiations should go and that should never be the intent of anybody, end quote. To see our daily brief, go to the address in our show notes and follow us on Twitter at New America ISP. The Coronavirus Weekly Brief was produced by Shannon Lynch and Jason Stewart and was edited by Shannon Lynch. This podcast is brought to you by New America and Arizona State University.